it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. And today we're getting our tubs up here by the house cleaned out. Uh, they're full of weeds and sticks and other things that need to be cleaned out for the year. And then we'll uh, revamp the dirt that's in them, make sure that we uh, have all the drain holes are clear and all that so that we can begin growing in these tubs for the season. Now, normally what we do out here, once we get the tubs clean, is we plant our lettuces and our radishes. Uh, we usually plant some of the things that we're trying. Uh, we usually grow our big uh, tomato producers out in the garden. This year we're growing Jetstar and uh, Rutgers tomatoes. Those were Howie's favorites and I have a bunch of those started in the, in the house. And so those will be going out there. But then we also have a bunch of other tomatoes that we wanted to grow. Uh, Hillbilly and Kellogg's Breakfast, Abraham Lincoln or Abe Lincoln, and a bunch of different uh, varieties of uh, just slicing heirloom tomatoes. And then our cherry tomatoes, we're not putting out in the garden either. We're gonna grow them up here. And we've got, uh, I love chocolate cherry, and we've got some yellow pears and some different ones that you guys will see hopefully this year. And the uh, growing season will uh, be a good season for us. It won't be dry and hot. Shine's not expecting a baby this summer, so <laughs> there won't be that to contend with. Uh, but we're we're still thankful for little uh, Rowdy and that he's healthy and whole. But this year we won't have to try to beat the clock between baby and garden. We've got some uh, Tumbling Tom's yellow tomatoes that will be growing in flower baskets. And uh, some other things up here, just fun plants for the summer. Uh, we have herbs and we have... Uh, some medicinal things that we'll be growing. One of the other things that we'll be contending with besides these weeds is we have some major ant issues. Now, uh, in times past, we haven't had a big problem with ants, uh, but we had uh, turkeys and chickens and guineas and ducks that were all free range. And we're just building our herd back up, our herd, our flocks back up and um, they won't be here till the summer as babies. And so it's gonna take a while to get back into having free range uh, birds. Is the she? other issue was last summer when it was so hot and dry, we really begin to see pest pressure. Uh, you know, we were gone for a month at the children's hospital and there just wasn't any rain. We begin to see a big problem with ants especially and aphids. And both of those, uh, the ants just ate us up. They, everywhere we went in the garden, they seemed to just be thriving when nothing else was. And then the aphids got on some of our crops and between the two of them, they really did a number on a whole lot of things. Now, uh, I'll have Sh Cheyenne's behind the camera and I'll have her show you this ant over here in this, we're redoing this flower bed. This is normally where we have sunflowers and zinnias and we'll do the same thing again but you can see what kind of issue we have with these ants and those little boogers are mean as rattlesnakes and they like to chomp down on fresh skin <laughs> toes ankles they're not they're not picky at all and so we have to contend with this but we will be cleaning these beds out Shane can or not beds I'm sorry these tubs these are all mineral tubs and yes I have blue and red and green and yellow we have some uh, buckets that we'll be using to grow all of these different things this year. And um, we've got to get busy cleaning them out. We've got some ants that have uh, become an issue in some of them. Some of them have, uh, like the little green ones here that have the water pipes in them. Those are uh, special that Howie did so that he could pour... Uh, extra water in the bottom and it's a wicking system that the water wicks up and waters the plants uh, Last year, like I said, we didn't grow anything in these pots And so they've set for a year and they need a little bit of attention So we're gonna get busy and we'll bring you back and show you our results So we have about half of our mineral tubs cleaned out We ran into a problem with about three or four of them on one uh, one end of our uh, row that they are just infested with ants. And so we um, had to leave those and Blade will have to get those. Um, he has some um, ant granules that he can put in there and see if we can't get the ants taken care of. Then be able to dump those completely out and put new dirt in those particular tubs. And then we have about eight more 
eight to ten more mineral tubs and some more buckets that need to be cleaned. But we're running out of time now. The babies will be up from their naps and it'll be time to get dinner started. So we did get part of them done. We've got some um, flowers that we needed to transplant out of some of the buckets and into places in the garden. Some irises and some uh, we trimmed back some of our grapevine. We still have a big, uh, a big portion of, of that to go, uh, but we did get get some of it cut back and so we're excited to see some of those projects going so before we go in for the evening i thought that i'd spend a, a little bit of time just uh, enjoying uh, the cool breeze that we've got going and i'm sitting out under the uh, shade tree now we don't have many shade trees that are big enough yet uh, when howie and i moved here we moved into the cow pasture literally and um and have had to develop our yard We've got some shade trees out at the road that are big enough, but who wants to sit at the road? And so uh, we, I'm sitting under the pear tree, and it feels good out here, uh, able to relax and, and gather our thoughts before we uh, get in there and get dinner cooked for the evening and the babies start uh, roaming around wanting attention. And, of course, I, that's my favorite thing to do is spend time with them. And so, anyway, we got the tubs ready. We'll be ready to get some of our early stuff planted uh, we probably uh, it's not near time for the tomatoes or peppers or anything like that yet uh, but we ca can do our radishes and our lettuces and we have a few other things our bunch of onions now I did plant bunch of onions in the house and so far not a one of my seeds came up and they're new seeds so I don't think that there's any uh, necessarily any problem with the seeds uh, I just I don't know if I haven't really given them enough time most of our things are coming up really well. The peppers are being kind of slow, but peppers take a little while. I'm trying to encourage Cheyenne on that because she planted all the peppers. And, of course, the tomatoes are up and going, and the trays are full and flourishing and need to be up potted again. And the peppers are just kind of sitting there. Uh, but, uh, but I'm encouraging her that the peppers take a little bit longer not to, not to lose hope on those. And uh, so we got out here today and did all of this. And... <coughs> in hopes of getting some stuff planted now I plan on uh, the lettuces the kids will eat we've got we've got uh, what did we get shy and we got romaine lettuce and we got a um, yeah leafy lettuce from we got a mix didn't we mm -hmm. uh, rocky top I yeah. think is what we got a rocky top mix and we've got several different ones we'll be able to fill several tubs with different lettuces and the kids love salads and they'll be able to eat those but I've got quite a few different radishes that I want to grow, and I'm the only one in the house that eats radishes. Uh, I had high hopes for little Howie last night because he's not a picky eater, so I try. I introduced beets to him last night, and just about the time the beet hit his lips, they came back out of his lips, and he. So right now he does not like beets, and so I got hope with Rowdy that he will like them. I'm trying to convince Cheyenne that they're good for your liver so she'll eat them um, but I'm still going to grow uh, those and we've got turnips and, and others now those, everything's looking pretty good so far we might possibly have to think about buying some cabbage plants we do have cabbages uh, planted in, in their grow out trays uh, but we have some varieties that didn't do anything we have some little cabbages uh, we have we have some early Jersey Wakefield uh, but, uh, and another type that's new to us, but all of our other cabbages are just kind of sitting right there now. And I haven't given up hope on them, um, but if worse comes to worse, we'll just buy, excuse me, we'll just buy the cabbages. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time encouraging your hearts today. I know that uh, we're seeing all kinds of news reports coming out. and. Uh, this is spring and it's feeling good for most of us. I know that some of you still have some snowy weather, but um, we're looking forward to the summer and people begin to thinking about trips, vacations, and other things that they go do. And of course, we know that gas prices in the summertime usually go up. The demand is higher. But Cheyenne and I had errands to run yesterday, which was the 9th of April. And as soon as we pulled into the local gas station, we seen this young guy walking across there with that little pole thing and all the little 
square numbers and he was getting ready to change the prices on the fuel. When we pulled in, the price for the regular unleaded was $3.19 and the price for the 100% gas, no ethanol, was $3.39 and the diesel was $3.79. Well, they didn't change the price of the diesel, but while we were filling up our tank, they changed the prices on the unleaded gas. The regular, they changed from 319 to 339, so it went up 20 cents or 21 cents or somewhere in that region. It was either 20, it was either 20 cents or 21 cents. Uh, and the 100% uh, ethanol, which is what Cheyenne got, 100% gas, ethanol free, not 100% ethanol. Um, that gas she got, it went from 339 to 379. So while we were filling up, it it raised 40 cents a gallon. So just know that gas prices are going up. I don't know if that you're seeing that in your area, but guys, we know that if gas prices are going up other products are going to go up too in price and so uh, they're either going to go up in price now i know the price of eggs are coming down and that's good news for a lot of people um those those prices have come down but if the gas prices continue to raise i almost would guarantee you that the prices on products are going to go up or the prices that they are now are going to remain uh that and not go down in price or they're going to shrink the packaging where you're actually not getting as much product, so you're still paying higher for less product. So nowhere is there any time for us to say, things are looking good again, we can relax, or we don't need to make preparations, or we don't need to stock our pantries. Now is the time to continue doing the things that you know to do to ward off the higher prices that are probably coming down the pike again. Uh, uh, we have our plans for our pantry and I hope that you guys do as well uh, we're uh, we are stocking when we find things on sale uh, th there's lots of people that are out on Facebook and YouTube giving ideas on how to save money uh, buy a couple extra cans a week when you buy your groceries or however many times a month you buy your groceries look for sales uh, shop the um, the farmers markets and the fruit stands and buy up a bulk amount and can them and preserve them if you're able to do that and um, by all means just do what you can for your family making sure that you get uh, the things that your family will eat well it won't do me any good here at, here at my house <laughs> Cheyenne's laughing because she knows what I'm going to say here at my house we have a little bit of a war when it comes to green beans now I love green beans but I've got one kid, being Blade, that loves French cut green beans and doesn't really care for just regular cut green beans. And Cheyenne does not like French cut green beans. She likes regular cut green beans. So I've asked them, what do you two expect me to do? Open a jar or a can of each kind for you guys to have at dinner. And so we're trying to decide. I guess each time I make green beans, I'll have to switch off from just regular cut green beans to French cut green beans and to make it fair for both of them. I don't really know what to do. Uh, it's funny, my, and my dad is that way. My dad prefers French cut green beans. Um, Howie and I grew up on home canned green beans and store-bought store -buck cut green beans. But when we got married, we, for I don't know what reason, we just bought French cut. And Howie actually got to where he preferred French cut green beans himself unless it was home canned green beans. So that's just a funny little argument that we have uh, going on here. It's not really an argument. It's just a, you know, something fun when it comes time to getting them to eat their vegetables. Uh, so it wouldn't do me any good to stock my shelves with pickled beets or any of that kind of stuff that none of them will eat. Make sure that you can the things that you, or can things, buy things, stock your pantry with the things that, that everybody eats. It's important to have a well-stocked pantry, but you need to make sure that it's not something that's going to go to waste because in a time of crisis, nobody will eat. Everybody's wise to say, well, if they're hungry, they'll eat it. But that's really not true.
studies have proven that little kids and the elderly especially will um, just refuse to eat. They have, they'll get appetite fatigue and they just won't eat. Uh, I don't understand all the science behind it, but they just will get to where they'd rather not eat than to, than to eat that. And you don't want to find yourself in an emergency situation uh, trying to get everybody to eat rice and beans if nobody in your household likes rice and beans. So we need to continue to prep our pantries with our sale items, the items that we grow. This is going to be an important year again this year for growing a garden if you're able to. Grow, grow, grow. Grow in the mineral tubs like what I've got or buckets or containers. Um, you can do fresh foods that way. Uh, if you don't have a garden space, it's probably going to be a little harder for you to expect to be able to grow a large amount of food to be able to can if you don't have the space or um, the containers to do it. You might possibly have to look at the farmer's markets and the fruit stands. And you can find some really good deals by shopping them on fresh, locally grown produce. Don't count that out. But if you can't do that, by all means, go to the grocery store and buy the products that uh, that is in, that's your family will eat. And don't let anybody make you feel guilty. And don't you guilt people into being uh, ashamed of the things that they buy to put in their pantry. They need to stock what's important for their families to have. Remember the story about the grasshopper and the ant. And the grasshopper had fun all summer long. You know how the grasshopper is, and I've shared this story before, how all summer long these grasshoppers have fun. You just watch them in nature. They bounce from plant to plant and flower to flower, eating all your stuff and making you mad, chewing on your leaves and, and uh, having a good old time. And when it comes to the ant, they're, they are busy. They have their nose to the grindstone working. An ant is always working, always looking for food, always in our tubs and messing with our stuff, getting on our feet when we're in the garden. They're busy, 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 busy. And that's what we need to be. Busy, putting by, making sure that we're taking care of our families. Now, uh, one other thing that Cheyenne uh, and I are going to do this summer is we're going to take opportunity to get us out of the house a little while um, during the summer, like maybe one day a week, probably a Friday, Thursday or Friday, probably Friday, and just take a little time uh, when we're out and doing our um, our errands for the week we're going to take opportunity to go to some of the yard sales and different things and you might say why that's such a crazy thing but we're going to start looking um, for clothing for the boys and shoes and things that we can use that we can stock back saving some of that precious money for things that are uh, needed that we can't find second hand or we can't find at a bargain we're going to try to save a little bit of money there one, it'll get, uh, give us a, an outing, and two, it's saving us some money. And you'd be surprised at some of the things that you can find at yard sales that people are willing to get to uh, part with. Clothing and shoes, a lot of times you can find sheets and blankets and comforters, and um, those things will wash, and they'll clean up really nice. You can look at things and decide if it's something that still has wear in it. Um, and also you can find... Uh, uh, toys and different things that can be cleaned up and be used later on down the line for gifts or whatever. I know that people think that's a cheap way of doing things. <coughs> <coughs> but that's something that my mom and others in her era, in her generation did to make ends meet and to take care of us kids and make sure that we had a nice Christmas and we didn't care if it was something secondhand. Because most of that time, they had taken their precious time and cleaned those things up and made them nice and new for, for us to have. We need to get away in this nation and all around the world of being so quick to throw something away because we don't see the value in it anymore. And use that opportunity to make it into a new thing. And so that's something else that we're going to be doing this summer. And hopefully we'll find some good things and we can show them to you on some of our videos on our um, shopping expeditions and our uh, our purchases that we make for new items, uh, stocking items, and for items that we found that might be uh, something that you can keep an eye out for yourself. We all need help. We all need 
a helping hand once in a while. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that you need help. And there sure isn't anything wrong with showing the love of God and being a help to someone else. The Lord tells us that everyone is our neighbor. And so we need to be willing to give our neighbors a helping hand, regardless of who they are. They're not just next door to us. Our neighbor is everybody around us. And so if we can do our part and, and uh, stock our pantries, look well to the ways of our households, but yes, also look well to the ways of those around us. You know, we have a lot of trouble that's going on in this world and everybody's pointing fingers and saying, well, it's this thing or it's this thing and we need to make laws against it. And we need to say that people can't have this particular item. We can't purchase it and we can't uh, use it for sport or for hunting or whatever. But that's not the issue at hand. What the real issue is, is that people have lost their love for one another. And until we get that back, we, I don't think we'll see much improvement. We have to love one another, and we have to want better for one another and want uh, them to succeed. And for us to do that, we have to be a neighbor. And so we, uh, we're we going to do our part this year. We're going to uh, do all that we can to work and uh, do our gardening and uh, uh, can and process and put things up, buying what we find on sale, uh, I'll tell you, this week is a good week for you to be looking at hams. They'll be on sale after Easter, and um, it'll be a good time for you to be able to maybe get a couple of them and put them in your, uh, not your pantry, in your freezer. Don't put them in your pantry uh, to have for some Sunday dinners. Okay, guys, I wanted to just come on here and spend a little bit of time with you guys, encouraging you to keep looking well to the ways of your household. The gas prices are no joke. Like I said, we were witness to it yesterday while we were filling up our tank. It dropped four, uh, it jumped 40 cents. So I, I just have a feeling that it's going to continue to get higher. So we all need to do the best that we can. We'll be all right. We just hold it together. Keep working industriously like those little ants. Although I'm going to do my best to kill these ants out. <laughs> uh, so maybe that wasn't the best illustration. But uh, those little boogers are mean. And so we'll get after those later to take care of that for us. If you've got any ideas of how we can combat these ants, we did, we've got some granules is what we're going to be using. But maybe you have an idea of something that works better for y'all. Uh, I really feel like it boils down to just not having our free-range chickens and guineas. Um, and then the drought conditions that we had last year. I just think that's what has has really um, caused the issue, but boy, are they aggressive. So we're going to get those taken care of, and um, tomorrow, we'll try to get back on here tomorrow and show you we've got some more buckets that need to be cleaned and some uh, mineral tubs, and then we need to plant out our um, yummy old radishes and lettuces. So till next time, guys, this is Josie. I love you guys. I really do. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. I'm excited about something. Cheyenne is going back to school. And um, she is going to, all of her classes are online, and she will be earning a, a certificate in medical coding. But she's also been accepted to, uh, she, so she can get a, um, an associate's degree in uh, hospital administration. And so she's looking at doing that, and I'm excited for her. So this is going to be a busy, busy summer. Um, she can do a lot of her classes in the evening when the boys are down for the night, down for the count, and uh, it's kind of a challenge during the day, but I think she's up for it, and I'm excited for her. So anyway, guys, keep looking well to the ways of your household, and until next time, we're gone. <laughs>